Mm. Jason Ross. Hey, uh, Dave. Dave's ready, by the way, Dave. Well, speaking of best humans, joining us right now, Florida's own, Miami's own from CBS Sports. And we will, of course, let you know at the end of our interview where you can hear, see, touch, and feel Dave Richards. But he is ours for the next few minutes to answer your questions and talk fantasy football week one. Good morning, Dave. It's Dave and Jason. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, but I have a question. Who Uh is the best human being on earth? Oh, we were. I said in a uh, in a national radio publication yesterday, it was Jason Ross that yeah. used this. Yeah, human. Jason Ross is the best human being yeah. on earth. He's one of those people where if somebody comes up to you and oh, they have God. an issue with okay. Jason, you immediately right. know yes. that it's that person with the yeah. issue, not Jason Ross. Nobody dislikes him because he's an incredible human well, being. I don't have a problem with Jason Ross. I think Jason's awesome. What's but funny about listen, what you? Hey, listen to you go goo goo gaga over Jason. Look, you know this man in this. I thought business, it was well said. In this business, you got to you got to make your partners happy. Otherwise, there's issues behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> and the the other funny thing is that it's funny you said that because that is almost verbatim what I said about Jason in that article yesterday. Wow, we're on the I same. I read page. it from the article. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Good yeah. Night. See, uh, we were we were doing well, and then and then uh, that. By the way, uh, I have the first question for you, and it's actually really good. Hey, Dave Richards. Let me. By the way, let me just stop here. Dave's been on with us. We we went over for twelve years, and I know he gets this all the time. I'm going to stick up for Dave, who is also a phenomenal human. It's he's not Keith's grandson. It's Richard, as in the first name. It's not Richards. Okay, it's not Denise. Mm. It's not Keith. It's not Jason. Do we have another Richards? What's Mount Richards more? Little. Little, that's Little Richard. Yeah, no, nah, Mount Richard. Yeah, not related to any cool people. No, it's it's <laughs> Dave Richard. Anyways, uh, but I love the I love the question here, Dave Richard. Can you talk me off the ledge of not wanting to trade Mark Andrews for a free appetizer at Applebee's? I was convinced my man was just trying to close his move ring last night. <laughs> what, what, that got me. What do you What are your thoughts on Mark Richard owners? Mark, God dang all it, I want to tell Andrews. everybody that's panicking after yeah. week one is that first of all, it's a terrible idea to panic for fantasy yeah. managers. You got to just take a deep breath. You know that players have bad weeks all the time. Nobody is good every single week. It's very, very rare. Those that are, they go with the first overall pick. Um, but Andrews had a bad game. He was also double teamed on that touchdown to Isaiah Likely. Uh, he was double teamed on the would be touchdown to Zay Flowers at the end of the game. And he was double teamed on the would be touchdown to Isaiah likely at the very, very end of the game. So there's, there's a reason why Mark Andrews wasn't heavily involved in the passing game, but he was on the field a lot. He played 53 snaps. He ran 38 routes. That's a lot of routes for him. He's going to have his day. And it wouldn't surprise me if the day is a week from Sunday when they take on the Raiders Mm. at home. So have some patience with Mark Andrews. And if you're streaming tight ends and you get the chance to give up a free appetizer <laughs> for Mark Andrews, please do so. The, okay. This is not going to be the norm um, where Mark Andrews gets bupkis, but I think we will see Isaiah likely stick as a part of this Baltimore offense. Dave, I know, and I agree with you, there's no time to panic, especially after one game of the first week, but was there anything in the game that changed an opinion of maybe a guy's prospects going forward. I know the Chiefs have so many weapons, but Worthy looked terrific last night. Would he move up on your list? I just after one night, anything of an opinion change from what you watched? Worthy was already somebody that I was excited to draft, um, but I think he's still going to be in that number three receiver boom bust range because I, I just how often is he going to get six or seven targets? I think once, especially when Marquise Brown comes back. We're talking about somebody who might really only see four or five targets and one or two carries a game. Uh, that's not enough. It's, it's hard to trust guys like that. He would need to score a touchdown and a long touchdown every single week for him to return great value. So he, he's going to be good, but I don't know if he's going to get the opportunity to be great week in and week out. And Rasheed Rice is one person that stood out to me. I could go in a bunch of different directions with this, Jason. You are a great human being. Thank you. Um, but Rasheed Rice looked faster. Um, certainly crushed it on inside breaking routes. I think defenses will catch up to that. The Ravens certainly did in the game, but I think he's somebody that's still going to get good target volume, no matter who's on the field for the Kansas city chiefs. 
And that might make people a little bit more nervous about Kelsey, especially since Brown will eventually come back. And he'll take a couple of targets every single week away from Travis Kelsey. So I'd probably be a little bit more worried about Kelsey than I would be about Mark Andrews. I already told you that Isaiah likely, I think he's going to stick. He, he might act as like the number three receiver in that offense. I think the Ravens will eventually get Zay Flowers catching passes further than half an inch down past the line of scrimmage. I mean, that was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. His dot was 5.4 yards, but so many of those plays were these screens. And I think that that was a reaction to their offensive line. Let's keep an eye on that Ravens offensive line, because if they struggle, it's going to mean some bad things for the efficiency of not just Zay Flowers, but also of Derrick Henry. And I think people are a little bit nervous that Derrick Henry only played about half the snaps. I would look at that as a positive. He's 30 years old. You don't want him playing every single snap, but it's clear that he's going to be game script dependent once again. And in games where the Ravens are trailing, you might not get the best of Derrick Henry. I don't think that that will be the case next week against Las Vegas, but we shall see. Dave Richard, CBS Sports, joining us. Now, generally, I, I will sneak in a question from a random listener. That's really my question that I'm just faking, but I'm going to be fully transparent. I've been waiting to talk to you all week, and this is about my team. It's just I think others may be dealing with stuff like this. So in my auction league, $200 of fake money that you get to spend on your entire team, 18 rounds, 12 people in the league. I was at my son's soccer game in a part of the world that did not have reception. By the time I got reception, because the game went way long, uh, I opened up the draft room, Dave, and I had spent, I think it was $60 on Justin Jefferson, $60 on C.D. Lamb, and $40 on Josh Allen. I had... 160 of my 200 spent on three players. Uh, Both receivers went for about an average of five bucks higher than any other receiver picked in the entire league, just to give you an idea. Uh, And then I was so simultaneously pissed and I felt screwed. (laughs) Obviously, those are three tremendous players. And looking at the uh, potential matchup this week, I'm actually favored, weirdly enough. But, dude, I have Chandler starting in Minnesota. I have in a league you're not required to start a tight end. I have Mark Andrews, Evan Ingram, and Kyle Pitts. Ugh. I have New Orleans' defense. So here's my question. I obviously have three A-list guys and Allen uh, and Jefferson and, and Lamb. If you're me, do you hold on to those guys, possibly take it in the shorts early, and just go crazy on the waiver wire, hope you get lucky, and find yourself those guys this year? Or should I be really actively looking to trade two, if not three of those guys to spread out the talent on my squad. I would try and move those tight ends, especially if you've got somebody. Wait, did you say you have Andrews? I have Andrews, Ingram, and Pitts. Right, so you can't trade Pitts or Ingram to the guy that's got Andrews because you're the guy with Andrews. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Eventually, people are going to get a little bit feisty for a tight end, and that's when you can move those tight ends, you're not going to get the value that you want because you don't have to start a tight end in this particular league. But the one thing that I do know about you is you pay attention to your fantasy leagues, which is, uh, you know, you'd think that that would be something that everybody does, but a lot of people don't do that with their fantasy teams. They just kind of draft and maybe they pick up a player every couple of weeks, something like that. Maybe when they need to pick up a player, they go and do that. No, I know that you're going to be aggressive about picking up players and when, not if Dave, When you find those good running backs off the waiver wire or other positions that you need, you're already going to be stocked with a top three quarterback and two top five wide receivers. And that's when your team is going to light up the scoreboard, baby. Woo! And you're going to have some awesome numbers and you will cruise to the playoffs. Remember it, everybody, everybody in your league is going to be either one in three, two and two or three and one after the first four weeks. If you're one in three, or even on four, you shouldn't care one bit because you can come back from that, especially as long as Lamb, Jefferson, Allen are contributing. That being said, if one of those guys go down, mm, uh, it's true. time to start planning for 2025 fantasy <laughs> baseball. I feel kind of uh, better, Jason. Oh, uh, there you go. Good. Uh, Dave, how about some of your favorite plays uh, for week one, just kind of around the league? Which Which guys are you going, you have to play this week if you have them? The more I talk about Chris Godwin, the more I like him against Washington. This is a commander's defense that's got a great coach in Dan Quinn, 
but I don't know where their pass rush is going to come from. I don't know if their secondary is very good. And Chris Godwin is healthy. At the end of last season, he was healthy as well. Final five games, averaged nine targets per game, had over 15 PPR points per game. He's going to play in the slot more. Uh, I'm looking at my rankings. I've got him 26. I think he should be closer to like 21. He's going to be a very good number two wide receiver. I like him. And in the same game, Terry McLaurin, who's going to be the number one receiver for Jaden Daniels. I think he could end up having a very, very good game at wide receiver. Tight end, Taysom Hill. Get used to it. He's going to be a top 12 tight end every week. Great matchup against Carolina. I would expect four or five catches. And you know that he's always capable of stealing a touchdown from our guy, Alvin Kamara. I was not a big fan of Aaron Jones or DeAndre Swift or even Raheem Mostert when we were drafting a, a week ago, two weeks ago. But they're, match, they're healthy now. Their matchups are good. I'd be totally fine starting any of those three running backs in their respective matchups. I also feel good about Javante Williams as a low-end RB2 against Seattle. And then just talking about a couple of quarterbacks. Uh, that Sunday night game between the Lions and the Rams, I think it's going to be high scoring. And the matchup between the Jaguars and the Dolphins, I think it's going to be high scoring. Goff is actually my favorite quarterback of all four of those teams. I would rank them Goff, Stafford, Tungavailoa, and Trevor Lawrence. They are all top 15 fantasy quarterbacks for me. They are all worthy of being starters. And if you've got Brock Purdy, if you've got Aaron Rodgers, if you've got Caleb Williams, if you've got Justin Herbert, I would shift to one of those four quarterbacks if you can. All right, we are uh, almost out of time, but I want to clean up just two quick lightning round questions from the listeners. You might have just answered one, Javante Williams or Jerome Ford uh, in flex. The other one, based on matchups, Deontay Johnson or Amari Cooper. I will go with Cooper over Johnson, and matchups are going to be tough there. And I'm not big on Jerome Ford, so I would go with Javante Williams. Well, I'm big on all the content you put out, and I know our listeners are as well. So in addition to Twitter, where it's at Dave Richard. Where can uh, people find you? You ask me that every time, and I tell you every time, and you still don't know, Dave? Come on. <laughs> I'm not it's the best CBS human, dude. .com. <laughs> My rankings are there, all the content's there, and I'm writing more this year than I did last year. You wow. can read about Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin. Christian Kirk is an interesting start. Michael Pittman is someone I'm kind of getting away from this week. You can read on them there. And we just got done with our podcast where we went through all the NFC home games, the whole start and sit shebang. I didn't want to say that too fast. It could have come out bad. Yeah. But lots of content to help you set your lineups on YouTube. Search for Fantasy Football Today. Like and subscribe. And go ahead and beat your league. And if I may, Dave, I would like to count down from five to one. <clears throat> five, four, three, one. Oh, and two. Well, that, that was cool. What I, what I miss in the middle there? Do you, do, you, do you see what I did there? You went five, four, three. And you skipped to one. You missed two. And then I said, oh, and two. Ah. Gee, Have a good weekend. I'm going to just bash my head into it. Love you, Dave. Have a great weekend. That Thank was you. good. That was, he got, honestly, he got my, me mouth, too. My, my mouth was open on that one. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was expecting it. I was not, I was not expecting it. And you know, when you feel like everybody else got the joke, but you, you almost don't want to ask that was, that was a curveball, brother, but uh, we'll survive. We'll take, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do this. Let's take one minute to recover. And then let's come back with three for madness. If that's okay with you, I, I, you need it. I need it too. That was good. 